Okay, time having arrived. Uh, thank you for attending tonight's public hearing on the budget. Um, public hearing is an opportunity for uh, citizens, concerned residents, uh, employees to speak with respect to obviously the process and uh, have an opportunity to voice their concerns. So statutorily I need to read the following. In accordance with Massachusetts General Law Chapter 71, Section 38N, the hearing is now open for members of the public to discuss the proposed FY 2015 School Committee's recommended Brockton Public Schools budget. The role of the School Committee is to listen to comments and concerns. <coughs> members of the School Committee will not respond to any of the statements or questions during the course of the hearing. In consideration of all speakers, I ask that each individual attempt to complete their remarks within three minutes and after everyone has an opportunity that is signed in and if someone else just walked in and they want to speak we will add them to the list um, and after those remarks then the public hearing would close and then we would uh, move into our special uh, meeting tonight to basically <coughs> have some final discussions and um, amendments to our budget so that having been said, we do have so far uh, four people. Is there anyone else that wanted to be added to the list? Okay. So we have four individuals. First we have Mr. John Talbot. John? <coughs> John, can you just push the mic a little bit closer to you? I think so. Better? Yep. Okay. Good evening, Madam Superintendent. Good evening, Mr. Mitchello and members of the school committee. I would like to speak to you on behalf of the custodians. Uh, this, is the f this isn't the first time. Can't this, this, ain't <laughs> this isn't the first time we've suffered deep cuts. Unlike other unions, we've been unable to return to our staff to a formal level. Um, <clears throat> we've been understaffed since 2010. Now this round of cuts, I'm unsure what kind of magic tricks we'll be able to be expected. I have no idea how we'll be able to provide the level of services that are needed to keep the schools in proper condition. Even with all the cutbacks, custodians will be expected to fill needs of the school programs. It is not realistic. The custodial workforce is already stretched thin. Travelers are expected to fill in when people are out, to also move and deliver things. The outside grounds crew cares for the athletic fields <clears throat> and the other schools. The craftsmen, they repair and sometimes remodel buildings. Many of these things go unnoticed, that is, until they are not being done. It will now, <clears throat> excuse me, it is well known that people want what they want when they want it <clears throat> and uh, have little concern with our staffing problems. I feel if we are cut at this level, it will greatly affect the standards we have gotten used to. Just because we oftentimes go unnoticed, in no way should we be ignored. Remember, it takes a village to raise a child. It will take all departments to run the school department, to run the schools. Thank you. Thank you, John. <clears throat> Next on our list is Ms. Mary Jane Pisano. Mary Jane? Good evening, Madam Superintendent and School Committee. Um, I'm here before you as a lifelong resident of Brockton and the President of the Administrative Assistance and Technical Employees. Um, I too have had three children come through the school committee, I mean come through the schools, and I have to say my children have been through the bad times and the good times. And we are now back at the bad times, but I'm still not understanding why all these cuts are so necessary. You uh, cut 14% across the board, 
but you are not bringing back the same percentile in every single union. I feel this is unjust. We are the um, administrative assistants, and at this time, you are not bringing any of the 14 positions you have cut back. I'm not quite sure how you understand that this is not going to affect work. We have mandated FBI fingerprinting coming in. You cut that position. Who's going to do that? We are already working to a limit of capacity. We stay late. We come in early. We work through lunches. We don't take breaks. And then you've devastated our union. We have 95 members. You've got rid of 14. And then you're going to displace a few of ours to fill the schools. Work is going to slow down. I don't know how it's not going to. Um, it's devastating to us as a union. We, we lost a member who's eight months pregnant. I don't know how she's going to do it with health insurance. Um, I just want to state that we, to coin a phrase from Superintendent Smith, we have a union that's not going to go away. We are going to fight till every member is back in their position. And I'm sure all the other unions feel the same way. Every member needs to be brought back. And I'm not sure why you're not looking at charging fees to these students. Every school district around here charges for senior parking, after school activities, busing. You charge a couple bucks to each one, it adds up. $50 for seniors to park their cars. They can afford a car, they can afford a license, they can afford the insurance. $50 a year is not going to hurt them. I thank you for your time and consideration into this and have a good evening. Thank you. <coughs> Next on the list is Ms. Linda Cahill. Good evening, Superintendent Smith and school committee members. Um, I feel the need to um, speak for my health service department. Um, I have a document here, if you could look at that. Um, Ann Claver made this document for us. She's one of our nurses. She's great with the statistics. Um, so currently we have 31 nurses and eight health aides, eight health paras. Um, our ratios are, are, the state recommends that the ratios be one nurse per 500 students. We have 17,000 students, so we, at this time, are still understaffed. Um, three of my nurses got pink slipped, um, and I can't see how we're going to do this. Um, on the first page, it, it just shows you how many students we have with allergies. We have 3,300 students with allergies, um, and seven EpiPens have been given so far this year. So those are seven lives that were saved this year. We have a lot of students with migraines, 203 students with migraines, and they received 582 doses for migraines. That would keep them in school. On the next page, we have asthmatic students, students with asthma. 2,800 students with asthma. We have 677 um, PRN prescriptions for asthma. And this year so far, we've had 2,800 um, doses of albuterol inhaler given and 192 albuterol NEBS given. So these students were able to stay in school because they had medication in school. We had, as of today, well, yes, this was made today, I mean yesterday. Um, as of today, we've had 13 students go out by ambulance because of asthma. On the next page, we have um, 47 students with diabetes. Now, caring for a student with diabetes takes a long time. When they're newly diagnosed, it can take up to an hour a day for the nurse. And plus, she has to see all those other students. Um, give their meds, any injuries, any illnesses, she has to deal with that also. Um, in the course of this year, out of those 47 students with diabetes, the nurses have tested blood sugars 6,910 times. Um, carbohydrate counting takes a while to do. What the nurses do is they um, have the student come in, tell the, the student will tell the nurse what they eat for lunch. The nurse will have to look under Chartwell's menus and see how many carbohydrates they eat, and then they have to administer insulin according to the doctor's orders. So it does take a long time for the nurse. Some of the nurses have um, more than one diabetic at the high school. There's 15 diabetics, and there's three nurses at the high school. So on the next page is just a summation. Up at the top, 
You'll see the number of student encounters. Our database tabulates for the year, <coughs> so it's year to date. We have 134,000 visits plus. Um, our health office staff also are responsible for doing screenings. So they do heights and weights. They do eyes and ears and scoliosis screenings. Um, these are mandated by the state. Our um, health aides also assist with these trainings, and we have hearing and vision techs also. So um, this, out, of, out of these, this total 134,000, um, only 8,000 were dismissed. 134,000 visit out of those visits, 123,000 stayed in school, and we have a return to class rate of 91.8 percent. State average is 88 percent. So as you can see, the nurses do a great job in keeping the kids well and staying in school. I'm concerned if we cut our health office staff that the students aren't going to be seen in a timely basis, and a lot of these kids are going to end up going home. So those are my concerns and I'm just asking that you please consider not cutting the nurses or the, or the health aides. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Um, and last on our list is Mr. Jim Bosco. Thank you to the school committee for allowing me this opportunity. Um, I'm a resident of Brockton, and I'm here to um, thank uh, the Brockton Public School System for um, graduating my two children, um, who went through uh, the entire their 12 and 13 years of education, and from everything uh, myself and my family um, recognized was a great education. Um, and I want to thank the school system for that. And I wish I was taking all three of my minutes to talk to you about those years and those great accomplishments and I pictured myself one day doing that and today unfortunately I'm here to speak the rest of my time not for the positive things of this um, you know, my children entered, I believe, at the right time. They came in when there was, um, you know, monies for no children left behind. And we had smaller classrooms um, in testing and accountability. And I think that all contributed to the great education they got. I couldn't ask for a better turnout for my children. Um, I read in the paper that there were you know, Brockton teachers were 20, 22nd in the state of the highest paid. And I talked to some of my colleagues about that, and I said, I'm very proud of that. And they're like, well, you know, is, and I, I looked at it as to be something to be proud of. That we have, um, they may not be the highest paid teachers, but um, in my judgment, they, you know, if we're paying teachers for what they're worth, that's a good thing that Brockton can do that because I think there's a return on that investment. And I spoke to some other um, family members and, and things, and when we talked, it was like, you know, our teachers, because I know the school system and I was involved, it wasn't that teachers came in from eight to two and they worked as a part-time position. Many of our teachers come in early for early learning and they stay late for um, extra education for our children. Brockton is very challenged, I believe. We're diverse, and we have a population that requires the, the extra effort. And I think in doing that, um, when you look at a teacher's salary, regardless of where their pay scale is, uh, they, they do very, you know, a very good job for what they're faced with. And I just want to thank them for everything they've done for me. Um, My question would be, you know, I've, I've been watching and paying attention, and I don't have children in the school system anymore, but I care for it very, very much. And I wonder, with the bleak forecast that I've seen presented, I asked my state delegation, well, what would we ever expect for next year? And I don't know, I've heard no answer to that. But 
being faced with what we're being faced with this year, I believe affects the whole community, all of us. Um, what happens to a school system when it becomes, when the schools start to become underperforming levels and the state steps in and has to take over our schools? What does that do for businesses? Um, just for us going to work and people saying, they're seeing us on the news and seeing, uh, seeing. Brockton has had, our school system has been a beacon over the last decade of being able to look towards and say, what a shining star. We don't have, we don't have a lot of other things we can point to. And if we're gonna lose our shining star, Brockton's in trouble. I mean, I've heard it said that, you know, 300 students were added last year. We may have whatever the numbers are. We're going to, we're challenged with additional numbers this year. So what is Brockton faced to do? My suggestion is to residents and people involved that it's just not Brockton. If this was Taunton, New Bedford, what other, what other uh, municipality it may be that face a challenge like that, I believe that that's the opportunity for our state delegation to put into an effect special conditions as an amendment to a budget, to a state budget line item that says any community, not just ours, but if it was New Bedford, I'd feel the same way, that they come up with a special event funding for communities like Brockton. I talk to people that, you know, if there's 300 students, I was in orientation with my daughter for college, and her, you know, most of the parents I was talking to, they didn't even graduate 300 students. And I said, we were close to 900. And they're like, wow. And, you know, they were, had graduating classes of 100, 150. And I'm sitting there, we're taking in 300 a year of new students and the challenge of doing that in, a, in our environment. So I would look to our state delegation to maybe if there's something we can do, work to you, our uh, city council, and our state delegation to lobby, to maybe put some an amendment forward. In closing, I mean, downsizing, I understand business and I understand downsizing when it's needed, if it's necessary, and maybe there are some cuts that might be necessary in the school department. I don't know that. That's, that's something that you guys all do, but what I would call this what is being presented to, to the residents of Brockton is a complete, complete gut job of our Brockton school system and is unacceptable for any Brockton resident. Thank you. I'd like to thank everyone who certainly spoke and to be honest with you I don't think anyone sitting up here really disagrees with anything that was just said. Um, I think we all feel the same way. Um, it, there's a lot of components to make a successful school system. It's, you know, it's all the different bargaining units, it's all people working together doing the different roles that are necessary to function and, and believe me, we all get that up here. Um, so we are, you know, we unfortunately tonight have a certain number to work with and we have to go forward in terms of making the decisions that need to be made in order to go forward for next year. But I can assure you that money still are sort of coming in in dribs and drabs and um, you know I'm not supposed to but you know to the last point um, we are certainly reaching out um, those efforts are being made um, we've had discussions and we are continuing to have discussions um, and as the superintendent and the school committee stated before um, there is a funding formula that no longer works for an urban district like Brockton. The reality is that we <clears throat> we um, receive more students in the Commonwealth than any other district, and for us to basically have that lag time lag time before we're funded for those kids, um, it's really absurd, and, and it's just a budget buster. Um, so those discussions are taking place. The problem is I don't have a check yet that I can just say tonight I have a magic 2.5 million dollars and guess what? We can recall everyone that has received a pink slip. Do we all want to do that up here? Absolutely. We'd love to do that but um, just understand that we haven't given, we have not given up. Brockton never gives up as a community. We're continuing to have the conversations and we will take whatever actions. I can tell you that we're committed 
to going forward if we do not receive what we feel is the proper outcome. Um, you know, we will request that the courts look at this. And, um, you know, so we are prepared to go forward in the future. The problem is, you know, we have, we have basically a deadline for the end of this month and we have to um, make some serious and horrible, hard decisions. And um, again, everything that people said tonight, you know, uh, we all agree with you. Um, Madam Superintendent, before we close, would you like uh, the close on the public hearing part? Would you like to say something? Uh, I would. Thank you, Mr. Minicello. Um, I think all of you know what we have been going through for, it seems like forever. I think it's only been the past month and a half. Um, I have publicly said a number of times, I, and I truly mean this, I can't thank the school committee enough for everything they have done. And those of you that have followed it, they have been activists, they have been out there speaking on your behalf. We have been doing very hard work of identifying some programmatic cuts, all of it cuts deep, and we're trying desperately to get this is done so we can start to bring people back and start to move the district forward. And Mr. Bosco, it's interesting, I, I think you should be a community activist because that really is what it's all about. You know, it's not just yourself, I'm sure there are many parents out there, many community members that feel exactly the way you do. Uh, I also feel those same sentiments and I live here, my children went through the Brockton Public Schools and interesting enough you mentioned downsizing. While this might look like that, we are not downsizing and we're not prepared for the growth that we are experiencing. I do want to say to the union presidents, you know, John spoke tonight, uh, Mary Jane, uh, I've certainly worked with Linda, uh, Kim, Dan, you have been excellent. You've been respectful of a very difficult process and you continue to lead your union members. And I thank you and, and I know you're not going away. So what I do want to say to the public is that there are next steps that Mr. Minicello just shared with you. We're on that. Um, this will continue. Uh, I've said to the school committee that every week we will continue to let them know of funds we have identified. We'll continue to have it up on the website so it is not something that once we leave here this evening that goes away. We're back at the drawing board tomorrow finishing up on possible um, early retirement incentives. We're back again on Monday. So we will be, will be back on Unfortunately, at this budget process for, for many days to come throughout the summer, I do want you to kind of hang in there with us um, and certainly hold us accountable to make sure that, that you're all in the loop. And, and I thank you for doing that. Any of the other members want to say, say something before we close the public hearing? I think you did a great job, Tom. Thank you. And Superintendent Smith. Okay. Um, I need a motion to close the hearing. Motion to close public hearing. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Okay, public hearing is closed. So, I'll just give this to Wanda. committee um, to discuss some what are called final discussions of the 2015 school department budget but as we previously stated the process is ongoing because we're continual we are continuing to seek more funding despite um, what we have this evening to work with so um, normally at the end of um, at the end of June when the kids are out of school the school committee um, has two school committee meetings official school committee meetings over the summer um, and things usually go smoothly I don't anticipate that for the summer I anticipate us um, having to sift through and continue to advocate and continue to make decisions ongoing this summer so despite the fact that um, Tonight, some people uh, will not be recalled. I do not um, put it out of uh, the future that um, over the summer, there will be uh, amendments to what uh, is being done this evening. So I, I anticipate a, basically a working summer. Um, so, so uh, Madam Superintendent, do you want to bring us up to speed in terms of your um, 
amendments to the last finance subcommittee meeting and the um, recommendations for this evening. Okay, and uh, Mr. Minicello, um, all of you have you know two documents in front of you. When we left the last meeting, we started to talk about when you work with numbers and you work with accountants, and Mr. Petronio is the best, um, one of the things that happens is you start to work in percentages. So what I want you to see this evening, although when we're looking at some of the cuts, especially in personnel, the paper over to the side shows you, for instance, if I can just review the power one and then I'll go back to the actual budget sheet. When we did 14% across the board, it required 52 reduction in force notices for that particular uh, unit. Out of that 52 you see in front of you that 28 were powers that actually received a pink slip and 17 that are sub powers that have to still take the power protest. There were other things that they need to take. But though that is the number 45. Those were actual pink slips that were given out to employees. Down below that you see the number seven. And although those are positions, and I don't want to lose sight of the fact we're not downsizing, but for right now, those are unfilled positions. Either we immediately held back once we knew what was happening. Some of them actually even had job ads that had gone out, and we had a hiring freeze. So as we look at you know, the sheet here, I'll go through it when I talk about um, what we're recommending to you, but I want you to understand that real numbers um, for people that actually got pink slips and other positions that we held off, and I'll go through that as we talk. Uh, as far as our certified staff members, from our 199 uh, certified staff members, at this time here I am recommending to you that uh, all um, of our staff members uh, will be returning and I want to explain why. First of all, and I will share that with you in your Friday packet so that you know that it was timely. When I left to come to the school committee meeting the other night, I had received word about a possible uh, increase in Title I funds, so we were thrilled. But before I could share that with you, we had to look into it deeper. Uh, we actually had uh, Karen McCarthy, our coordinator of Title I. We had John Jerome come in, who had, for many years had overseen Title I. So we were able to identify about a 4% increase that we haven't got official notice, but 4% increase. So with that, if you look at the eight that we had remaining on our certified staff members, we are bringing three of those eight back to teachers that I can tell you have signed for the early retirement incentive. Uh, two of them were moved to grants. One was an adult learning center position that directly went to their grant. And the other was uh, the SPED administrative position that is being picked up by a grant. And the other three are because of the Title I funds that we have identified. I will still, I want to bring to your attention that I still have from the five administrators, three will not be returning to their positions. They do bump back into the unit. So I don't have anybody at this point that has a so-called pink slip and you're able to save on unemployment. So two of the uh, administrators were called back into their positions. One is the bilingual uh, department head and the other would be the special education one. Just Mrs. a quick Joyce. question, if I may. Um, the phys ed positions that we needed to maintain in order to be eligible for the Carol White grant, are they included in this? Yes. So we will be able to get, get that grant? Yes. Okay, that's good and now we can, uh, Karen Watts should be back by our July 8th meeting mm -hmm. and we can start to move forward. And then those, that's, I guess that's good news. It if that's good news. You know, then you it's, start it's to It's hard to walk away from, from a grant like that. Correct. It'd be great for kids, as you all mentioned, with the reduction in so many activities, the CrossFit, the additional as Mr. Uh, Dr. Murray stated to you, there's large class sizes in the gym. This will mm -hmm. help to reduce those class sizes. Great. Okay, thank you. So, uh, any questions on that? If you go down to um, our paraprofessionals, because I had started with paraprofessionals. And also, when we left the other night, uh, the mayor, of course, talked to you about something that has to go before the city council. We've just highlighted on this budget sheet as far as programs. You'll see on the second page your freshman sports and your middle school uh, intramurals and equipment. Right now, that has to go through the city council. It still is obviously a cut in our budget, so we can bring staff members back. And that, we're being told, will be reinstated. I'll keep you updated as I hear. Um, and I also will 
remind you that the other monies that came forward the other night, the mayor spoke of 105 by the time we actually looked at that particular employee, that was the cable money. It had to do with health benefits along with salary, and it's 101,000 that we were able to okay. identify. And the mayor had also made a comment at the time that he wanted you to look at non-certified staff, and you have told us that the priority at this point are MTAs and paraprofessionals because of um, classroom uh, oversight with the students. So let me go to the paraprofessionals. So as I told you, there were 45 actual pink slips for people, and that was between the 28 paras and the subparas. You also have seven, you'll see the number seven, that's out there for positions that remain unfilled. I am asking you at this time, because of money that we identified in the substitute uh, budget, the additional 200,000 and there was some additional money left over from our cuts. I'm asking you to recall uh, 10 of those positions, which brings down your actual uh, number of people, paras, to 35. Um, we also have some unemployment savings, and I'll talk about that at the end because that'll be part of our next steps. The next item, um, when you're talking about the monitor teacher assistance, um, we had. Um, we actually ended up sending out 19 pink slips. We originally had 18. There was one extra in our figures which brought us to the 19th because of, a, sometimes you end up with a tie in where somebody is for riffing uh, reasons. So out of the 19, we identified again five from the substitute budget and I would like to, again, uh, because of your priorities, recommend five because of the cable TV money that came in at 100, um, uh, and one thousand, excuse me, hundred and one thousand dollars. That leaves nine remaining uh, employees, MTAs, that would need to be recalled. When you go down to our administrative assistance, um, uh, as Mary Jane had stated, the percentage was 14 required RIF notices. There were actual 12 actual notices, but two were retirements. And I don't want to lose sight of the fact, you know, I don't want to talk about downsizing. I'm aware of that, but those are 12 people to be called back right now as far as unemployment. And you do have the two retirements in there. Under your custodians uh, and craftsmen. We had 19, and this was, we found an error again in our figuring. I believe human resources rounded down, we rounded, excuse me, we rounded down, they rounded up. And it should have been 19 according to the 14%. Uh, there were 17 pink slips that actually went out. 15 were custodians, two were craftsmen, and we do have one uh, disability retirement that came in that we're not filling at this point. So we have 17 members of that unit that need to be recalled. Now, when I talk about, you know, if there is any possible good news, and this is the, um, excuse me. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Minicello uh, brings to my attention again. We also have out at this time 19 parent liaisons, we recommended last time, and we also had four non-union positions. So I believe that, bring, is it 96 the total? Yeah. yeah. So presently that's 96 total uh, cuts that we still have in the Brockton Public School budget. Um, that is a large, large number. And what I, when I started to talk about the good news is uh, Mr. Petronio and his staff has had people in for early retirement. So if I can talk on that line for good news. There are people, we have some commitments. Tomorrow is the last date and as we spoke about, that as a unit, for instance, if it's custodians, the jobs will go back to the custodial unit. If it's administrative assistance, it'll go back to the administrative assistance units. Other good news, we're looking at because of bringing people back, we have uh, numbers that I'll be able to, again, talk to you hopefully starting Monday because we're back to the table immediately after tomorrow once we get through the early retirement. We have unemployment cost savings. We're presently still looking at some efficiencies in some of our programming, with, which included some race to the top money. Um, we have a race to the top grant that we're finalizing and we're looking at some additional 
additional funds there. And you, if you look at the sheet that you have here, the spreadsheet, we have $48,000 there. I can give you that actual cost for some of the savings that we already had. Now, again, I, I, tonight we're, we're not finished school till Wednesday. We have a half a day. Once the city council passes this budget on Monday evening, the uh, recall letters will go out immediately on Tuesday, which is June 24th. We will be sending out a notice to all staff members tomorrow. We'll send an email out to talk to them about what's happening. And the principals will have in their hands a department heads, directors for recalls on Tuesday morning for those being recalled at this time. Um, as I said, I. I feel positive going forward. Not only do I have hope just looking at some of the cash that we're looking at to be able to, even as early as next mon Monday or Tuesday, recommend to you to bring back according to some of your priorities. So again, we will continue to whittle this down. We have a number of grants out there. And as I said, when you look at grants, they will help move possibly positions out of Chapter 70 and free up some Chapter 70 money as we go along. So it isn't that necessarily a grant is written for a custodian or a grant is written for an administrative assistance, although that has happened. But it will allow us to, to move money around. We end up with retirements. I mean, things do happen in a large system over the summer. So we will continue to make this a priority every day. Mr. Robinson. So this current the, the retirements that are listed here are part of the retirement incentive program. Three were in the teachers. People had actually signed. Those were actual. Okay, so in the, in the teacher line item, the ability to bring back those eight accounts for three who have already signed on the dotted line, accepted the incentive. Um, but in the other places, their retirement's absent of the of any of the retirement incentives, the people who were due to retire or... Right, I have many conversations with phone calls and I've been told they've either sent paperwork in or come in from water or drop it off. Okay, so we may end up with a few more. Oh, we, we absolutely will. We're counting on through conversations and... Okay. They have until tomorrow. There could be people that make a decision. In all honesty, we have had uh, people call, the same person call six and seven times. Mm -hmm. So as I said, you know, people are struggling with it. It's, you know, it's, it's the end of your career. You might have been going in the next year. The incentive was something that made it worth your while, which, which was our hope. It helps us with unemployment. It brings an employee back. Um, so, you know, there are people struggling and they, we could be surprised, but we certainly anticipate in a number of the units that there will be retirements and tomorrow is the last day. Great. Thank you. Mr. Henningsen. Uh, yeah, just one thing I just wanted to, to talk on, uh, this cable TV fund subsidy. Um, have we done a little bit of looking into whether or not that's actually going to happen? Because um, I had a conversation last night, and there seems to be a little bit of um, uh, discussion on whether or not that can even, uh, that transaction can actually happen. I had a conversation with uh, Mr. Condon on Wednesday, and going over the rules and regs of what is allowed under the cable TV access funds, we're allowed to pay for educational purposes anyone that's involved in cable TV activities. So what we're going to do is take the position of the Brockton Public Schools that runs the cable TV studio, we're allowed to charge the salary and benefits back to that grant fund. And that's at the mayor's discretion, so he doesn't need city council approval to actually do that. So that's where that transaction is. The other items that were brought up that we talked about all need city council approval. Yeah. So I didn't factor in anything that needs city council approval. If they do that you know, in a few weeks, then we'll start factoring back in whatever the city council approves for us. Okay. Because, yeah, last night I was just given uh, a little bit of different information that may not be uh, something that's allowed. It was actually um, discussed in a city council meeting, I think, about a month, a month and a half ago. And that's this is what the outcome was. So there was another position the mayor was looking to fund with, the, with, this, with these cable access funds. And it turned out he could not fund that. So that's what he said, all right, what can I fund? And that's what this description came up with. Okay, so we feel pretty confident then. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Um, how are we doing with respect to some of those grants that um, uh, your 
team was working on. Yeah, they, they, Laurie, I don't know if you want to speak. I mean, they are working on, we presented 11 uh, at the school committee meeting the other evening. Um, in all honesty, uh, we had administrative interns working on them. We've had, uh, you know, I, Mary Beth McManus has been working with us on the strategic plan uh, of her own time and actually I know sat with one of our administrative interns today on one of the after school grants, I believe it was. So they continue to, to look at everything that's coming. A uh, number of things come to me on a daily basis and I send them to the Grants and Development Office to, to review them and see if it meets with, you know, our programmatic needs in the district. But Laurie's here, I think, if you want to ask her directly. Um, is there anything sort of on the cusp of being successful or uh, yeah, in terms of a time frame, uh, Laurie? Thank you very much, everyone. Um, I'm looking for a $5.7 million. <laughs> exactly. The pressure isn't on by any chance. No, we, we most definitely are. We're, we're looking at every we'll give opportunity. give you a gift certificate if you get it. <laughs> <laughs> you should take it. We're looking at every opportunity that we can as far as anything that we can secure for the district to help in any way whatsoever to, you know, not only deal with a shortfall, but also just to expand upon what we can do for the children and the families of our community. So. We're not, we're not looking to not open any door. We're trying. I mean, I, we're, we're literally, we're, we're, we're asking people who have never done grants before, college students who are working with us, you know, on grants, you know, on grant funded monies to help us to secure, you know, grant funding. We're really stretching our resources as much as we can to be able to see that if we can pull as much money as we can into the district to be able to support what needs to be done in this community to help our children and families to secure what's best for them. So I can honestly say from my heart, I mean, the other night when I was here, I literally, I was almost brought to tears in what we had to do in the district, which just made me rise more to the occasion to say, we need to do the best that we can to bring in as many resources as we can. So I vow for our department, that's what all of us are looking to do, and we will continue to do so. So I just ask of you, if you find of any resources or any, or, or any opportunities that are out there, just share that with us so that we can look at them as opportunities to pursue what we need to do. So I thank you all, and if you have any questions, please. Thank you, Laura, we know you will. Anyone? Thank you, Laurie. We know your department's doing wonderful things, and we do appreciate everything you're doing. And we're really excited about <clears throat> what your department is going to be do, going to be able to do every year, not just for this coming fiscal year, yeah, absolutely. but every year. So absolutely, we look forward to hearing about more and more grants. As yeah, as you it's exciting times. Yeah. There's some challenging times, but it's also some mm -hmm. really exciting times too. Right. Thank so you. So I look at it both ways. So we have faith in you. Yes. And I also want to mention, because I see Laurie Mason out there in the bilingual department, it isn't just when, when you look at Laurie and we think of a grants department, and I've mentioned it's some of the names, of yeah. but SPED is writing yeah. grants, bilingual is writing grants, you know, Title I money. So it, it's not just a grants It's a department. unified it, effort. It's, yeah. it's certainly everybody. And, and again, I go back to one of the things I talked about a year ago was building capacity at the school level to build teacher leaders in, and one of them was to be to build that capacity so you have a grant writer in every school. Could be a ten thousand dollar grant. That you know there are things that come out for classroom teachers, you know, iPads and there are all kinds of so that was our goal. You know, hopefully we get there at some point. Now it's it's much bigger fish. But it is everybody and, and I thank all of you for working together. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Joyce. I have one question. Do we have any guesstimate on what we're hoping for, what was reasonably uh, hopeful for the race to the top additional funds? Yes. I think it is between 150 and 200,000, but probably closer to the 150,000. Okay. So um, we looked conservatively, 150. Conservatively, 150. Uh, as I said, the 48 is already there. Mm -hmm. um, 
almost 49. Uh, looking at some of the unemployment cost savings for what we just gave you, which which could be more, right. is roughly about 58. 70. 70? Unemployment 70, okay. And we're looking at those efficiencies in staffing. I'll have a, a better number there for you. So be just between the, the race to the top and the potential unemployment, we could be looking at another $200,000 right and, there. And that's quickly. So mm -hmm. as I said, you know, by Tuesday. Um, okay. And that's along with the retirement incentives. We're, these numbers will continue to change. So that gives us a pretty good benchmark before the end of the school year to start looking at some recalls. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Petronio? Um, on Title I, that's a, um, that's a conservative estimate. Um, Mr. Jerome said the figure mid to end of July before we get an actual state number. What we kind of did for a rough estimate was took the overall increase. We kind of know what our percentage of the overall budget is. That's where we come up with that number. Hoping that it might be higher, but again, that'll happen mid to end of July to get the actual um, allotment number on that. So, okay. And that's right. additional. So you take the 150, the 70, and the 180. Those are all real numbers. Yes, those are the Title I money we already figured in on the certified staff members returning. Mr. Petronio was saying it could increase by the time we get. We've already used the conservative so we've used, estimate. So we've used the 180. For the additional Title I. Correct. That's yes. on the second I'm page sorry. here. Right. We, we use that in order to be able to get all the teachers involved. Okay, so that's already used. What about the 150? That there is no number here for the race to the top. Exactly. Is that in addition? That will be in addition. Yes. Okay, and the 70K will be in addition. Yes. yes. So we're conservatively at like 220. Yes. Okay. And we're trying Great. to finalize that efficiency with a number of the programs. Mm -hmm. Edison Academy, there are a number of things we're looking at. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, anyone else? Anything else? I mentioned the letter. Yeah. Um, yeah, certainly. Why don't you? Yeah. Uh, one of the things, uh, and, and I heard it <coughs> mentioned, um, we have put together a draft and we will be sharing it with the school committee. It will go to Commissioner Chester. Um, I will follow up with, uh, actually even before I send the letter, I would like to make a phone call to him. We're gonna talk about just what we said, being a gateway city, looking for possible supplemental money, um, talking about the Chapter 70 formula. I had a conversation today with uh, Representative Brady and Cronin, uh, and there already is something in the works about the Chapter 70 funding, but I wanna make sure or I'm not sure exactly what that bill is. So it's great that they're looking at it, but they need to look at it through urban eyes. So we're starting to put together uh, a letter. Uh, I gave Mr. Minicello a draft. Mm -hmm. uh, we can certainly look at it. I'd love to have some wordsmithing with us. It got, it got lengthy, um, but th there's a lot to share with the commissioner. Mm -hmm. I feel very good that the commissioner actually came here this year. And one of the things we did, and, and I thank goodness for that, we went and saw a number of schools, but we brought him to the Barrett Russell. And what he saw there was, again, looking at our numbers, looking at 300 youngsters, looking at that building being brought online uh, by our district, uh, looking at the great things that were happening, and I know he saw that. So my conversation with him will be talking about the challenges that we're facing and finding out if there is some type of supplemental increase for this year, mm -hmm. not just to talk about next year. I keep hearing about, you know, it used to be pothole accounts for unusual growth in a district. So um, it certainly doesn't hurt us to reach out to him uh, in, in a collaborative way. So that's what the letter will be. Um, again, we'd like you to, to take a look. We'd like our state delegation to sign on. Okay. Um, and again, I will share with the mayor that we'll, I'll be sending it to the commissioner. That's great news. What we need to do is um, we need to basically approve the the allotment going forward as proposed. And um, what I would suggest we do is we also give in that motion um, the superintendent a little discretion. Um, 
I was thinking in the amount of three hundred thousand dollars based on the numbers that we're hearing and who knows you know what might additionally trickle in um, for her to utilize in her judgment with respect to um, personal personnel uh, services personal services and then um, anything over three hundred thousand uh, dollars would have to be um, upon allocated upon further discussion and approval of the school committee so that we can then talk about and look at some of the programmatic cuts that we've made um, as well as concerns from the superintendent about um, personal services personnel um, I just think that that gives her a little bit of flexibility because our next school committee meeting is not scheduled until the first of, I'm sorry, the 8th of July. Not that we couldn't call another special meeting, but I just think that um, the numbers that we're hearing, giving her a little bit of discretion um, would make things uh, go faster with respect to recalls, you know, between now and the end of the month. Um, so that's a suggestion it's open for discussion uh, on that suggestion uh, just a couple of points um, I think that the committee has been very clear in our priorities to you and you've got our matching orders so to speak mm -hmm. and I think that we are all on the same page um, as far as where, where the priorities are in staff and I think we get to the point that we may get to start micromanaging a little too much as a committee if we are going to approve every single staffing a decision that you make. Um, you know what our priorities are, you know where those positions need to be, and you have my full confidence that you will make the right decisions on bringing staff back. Over and above that, and I think that's a very fair number that, that Tom has brought forward because I feel very comfortable that we've already identified where that's coming from. And staff is very, very critical. Bringing that staff back is critical. We've, we've already been able to take care of most of our classroom teachers. Now we've got to look at the support staff that helps the, directly in the classroom as well as keeping our buildings and our facilities running. And uh, that's critical as well. In addition to that, any programmatic additions, I think that we need to still be involved in going forward throughout the summer, and that will continue throughout the summer. But to be able to, given the time frame that we have, the tight frame, time frame that we have, you have to be able to make those decisions on a daily basis without our interference on a daily basis. So I, I fully support Tom's recommendation, and, uh, and I know and I have confidence that it will keep us um, apprised of those decisions. That'll be very helpful because, as you mm -hmm. said, you know it's critical right now in the next week alone, uh, and we have identified a number of areas that are possible, uh, certainly for us to bring back additional staff. Mm -hmm. So that's appreciated. Yeah, I just think in your in the Friday night packets, you could certainly notify us in a quick yeah. little memo as to what came in and how you decided it should be allocated you know I think that'll be every Friday I think there'll be a budget update yeah. because I see this as, as very fluid um, you know and, and as we do this I, I also have to say again that when we look at what we've brought back no matter what unit it was because of the growth we have I want everybody to remember these are not the positions that we requested in the superintendent's budget you know I understand that that might have been a reach I think we all understand that you have to live with certainly in your pocketbook but there were positions in there that were very real positions that would have allowed us to move forward reduce class size and I continue to say to everybody that on the website all of this will continue to be there so everyone will get to see the programmatic cuts that exist the staffing cuts that exist the class sizes as we open the doors in September um, the facilities and what we're dealing with in our facilities because I think when you do that it keeps people informed and, and again it has the community support if this is something that they would support in, in looking at our budget and, and in supporting us you know because again it's been a lot of hours and a lot of time and I don't think any of us feels good moving forward I think we are moving forward we're pleased we're identifying efficiencies or ways to at least start to get our staff back but we still have to move the district forward I just want to make that clear 
Yeah, I mean, on that point, you know, no one here is happy with what we're doing. I mean, we're at a certain stage, we're making the best of a bad situation, um, but no one's happy with, you know, where we are yet. Um, you know, the work is going to continue. But with respect to um, your recommendations, you were hired as our superintendent. You were hired to recommend to us what, how is the best way and manner in which to move the district forward. So despite our current economic situation, you provided us with a blueprint, a valuable blueprint um, that basically outlines and tells us in your best estimation what the district needs in order to succeed, move in the right direction, and to in improve student achievement and run efficiently. A big part of that running efficiently is also the facility master plan and, you know, the, the outlook on our buildings. I mean, um, so... I do not feel that that was time wasted. It was what you were hired to do. And we appreciate the work that went into it. The only problem naturally is, you know, our current financial situation in terms of moving it and bring it to fruition. But having the blueprint is a step in the right direction. Um, you know, budgets and times will change. I mean, this is not, as people here have correctly stated, um, people have been here in the good times and the bad times. Nothing stays stagnant for too long. So um, when circumstances change, we certainly have recommendations um, that we can implement and utilize in order to benefit our students and our community. So, um, you know, I wouldn't feel in any way, shape, or form um, regretful that you made recommendations that you truly believe uh, the district needs to be successful. So. I have to tell you good news then. So I got to spend time. Somebody said to me, when you're feeling down, get out into the schools. <laughs> so I have been to the Davis. I have been to West this week. I've been to Plouffe. I have been to South. I have been to the B.B. Russell. Your kids are still, I mean, look at the day. They are working. They're doing projects. They're working on, on math problems I couldn't solve to save my life. Um, it, it has just been exciting. I've gone into special well, needs classrooms, which you know is what I love. Um, it has just been great to see the hard work, and that includes everybody in the buildings. It was the administrative assistant when I walked in the building that I knew could talk to me about things happening at the Plouffe. It was the custodians as I went through all the buildings. It was the teachers, the paras, and I'm not just saying this. This is what makes Brockton great. So the good news for you is in, in spite of everything going on, there was teaching and, and wonderful things happening, and you're you know, short of just a couple of days you know, of school left. So I'm very, very proud you know, of our school district. <coughs> Okay. So do we need a motion? Yeah, on that? we do. We do. Yeah. We'll be attempted. Go, go right ahead. Right. Let's let's see the new, let's see the newbie make the motion. <laughs> see how good I am at this stuff. Make a motion to approve the budget as presented tonight with two caveats. One being uh, giving discretion to the superintendent to hire personnel up to the amount of $300,000 as for personal services. And the second caveat being that anything over $300 that we need to return to discuss those issues. I'll second that. Great. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Okay. Um, any other business? I just, as always, want to remind that we haven't really discussed the non-net school site mm -hmm. budget. Mm -hmm. We've discussed that over tonight. the summer. Yeah. And that it's still um, short of what's needed for the district. So mm -hmm. there'll be some changes made there also. Yeah. 700,000 of our requested. Of our requests is a possible shortfall. Our McKinney Vento numbers keep going up every day. Up on the transportation. So we're actually Mike set up a meeting for Monday to discuss. Uh, I think one of the hotels is now um, converted from a half hotel, half homeless to a complete homeless. So not only do we lose money um, as far as having to do the homeless transportation, but I think the city's also going to lose money as far as the hotel motel tax. So the state doesn't pay that. That piece needs to be added to that letter. 
did I not put that in? I don't. Yeah. We did. I think you're right. That's a that's a, a to go in. That's a big issue for us. Okay. Um, well, that would be um, Mrs. Joyce. She's the chair of the that subcommittee. Fall under safety, security, so, and transportation. So notify okay. Mrs. Joyce when you need a meeting. Um, there are three members on that. I think it's Ray. No. No. And myself, Mrs. Joyce, and I believe and Judy? Mrs. Sullivan. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's the three of us, however, we will notify and make sure the whole committee knows when the meetings are and you are free to come, ask questions, make recommendations, help out in as much or as little as you want. And then okay. naturally, whatever is decided goes to the full school committee for further discussion and then naturally full approval like in all the other subcommittees that we have. So, um, so we'll be doing that. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> All right, um, I just would like to thank the public and all of the um, people who have been um, attending these meetings um, with us. It certainly has not been a, um, uh, a process by which I think anyone enjoys, but uh, we do appreciate your support. And what it basically shows is that this is a community and a lot of people care about what's going on in our schools and about uh, their fellow employees. Um, it's, it's, it's more than just a job in the Brockton Public Schools. We all know that. Um, it's a very special and unique, um, it's not really a business, but you know, an organization. Uh, you know, it's, it's not a business. It's, 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 it's more than that. It's community. So I thank you all for attending and um, being part of the process. Um, anything else? Mr. Jordan. Do you need any vacations? Any of us have planned? Would that be helpful to you? <coughs> Yeah, keeping up with us or whatever. That would be great if you could let us know and then yeah. um, we can give, give, way, so if you we can give that to meeting. Wanda and she can keep okay. it sort of in a yeah, file that's a good folder. idea, Ozzy. Mm -hmm. so. That way you're not trying to sue. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Seeing none, motion a motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. Second. All in favor? Okay. Thank All you. Right.